Next episode. <laughs> I was not hitting. I hit the wrong button. Oh, that was true end. Okay. So let's load. So the split is basically this. Suck of chapter 1000. Oh, let's do it! Stardust. <laughs> wow, I think I broke the microphone there. <laughs> Something is very wrong. Did I doze off while reading? My daydreaming turns into regular dreaming when I do. Is this what I was reading? Ah! I've got to get home. I'm sorry for falling asleep in the store, but I got to get. I don't like how that looks. Someone hung themselves right next to me while I was sleeping. Is that Mew? Is that Mew? Did Buck get her too? I feel sick. So, so sick. The floor slips under my feet as I fall back hard. Loudly knocking books to the ground. I assume they're books. I can't see anything. Everything goes black. What an awful dream. Hey. Hey. No. Oh. Wait, you. Hi, Mew. You are not normal. Oh my gosh. Did I break the human? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. Are you an alien? Uh <clears throat> no, I'm a mysterious, sexy librarian type. Look past my aloof and distant nature and fall in love with me ironically. No. An alien playing with a corpse in front of me. An alien is playing with a corpse in front of me. <sighs> this can't be real. I must be dreaming still. It's <laughs> Sorry to scare you. I was just hanging it up to dry, see? <laughs> alright, alright. I need to step up, move around. I'm gonna be right back as this gets epically hilarious. See you guys in a moment.
All right, I'm back. Sorry about the wait. I got carrots and hummus now. Oh. I think it's something non booze in me. Cause I was, I'm really feeling the alcohol. <laughs> Shagoth? Okay. Shagoth. Huh? Plural, that means they're more than just you just walking around the earth? We live where all the undiscovered nightmare fuel hangs out. Bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Not my fault you guys went to space before 100 percenting your own planet. <laughs> I like that. We're like 100 miles from the ocean. What are you even doing all the way in the countryside? Well... One day, I grew tired of the darkness beneath the waves, and upon tentacle and maw, I skulked upon your shores for one reason. Not hentai. You can't write smut underwater. <laughs> hentai! What a trivial reason. No. I think I would have heard news about giant tentacle monsters roaming through the country. <laughs> you think so? But I am a master of disguise and an expert on human linguistics. Are you? I've studied your culture extensively from the water, and I've mastered every language and can speak them in any accent. Check out my cowboy voice. What? <laughs> Howdy, partner. <laughs> no, it's Howdy, partner. Whoa, it's like you're a real cowboy. Thank you, thank you. Thomas. Though, to be honest, I only learned to read, speak, and write your languages so I could read your human books. They're far superior to cosmic scriptures. <laughs> Don't get me started on the localizations. So that's a comment on people watching, reading manga and watching anime in Japanese versus English. But that seems like a lot of effort. My complex motives are far beyond mortal comprehension. You want porn? Now, some idly alone spines of books written in English. They have suggestive titles. And every human language, just so you can consume all of our smut? <laughs> Maybe they weren't as complex as I thought. They also make lifelike human models learn every language that humans speak. I, I, I have a thing for humans, okay? I bet we know rule 34 of you. Look okay, around the store, a lot of these books are Eldritch, Curios, and Lore. Some of the book, these books. Big Slippery Shoggoth Girlfriends Volume 2. My Little Gaunt. Can't this be Felgrant? 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 Deep Ones. <laughs> They're explicit stories about love between humans and eldritch entities. I didn't know these kind of books even existed. Did she make all these? And... Are you the one that's been writing about my ultra dangerous reality bin ritual books? Nah. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mainly just write smutty dotions and such. Sorry, I'm just having trouble wrapping my head around that. They seem like two completely dissonant skills. <laughs> yeah, those two hobbies are completely unrelated. Uh huh. I have raised an inquisitive eyebrow. Wait a minute. What? They make smut books fantasizing about humans and eldritch gods meeting. They also make spell books that would allow humans and eldritch gods to meet in real life? Wait, I know what it sounds like, but I can explain. 
do so. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Mew. I've got nothing. I'm a disaster for human Eldritch love. <laughs> you indirectly summoned reality ending gods to our realm just so you could watch them date humans? I'd say I pretty directly summoned them, actually. Uh, that's a lot of hummus on the carrot. Why the heck did you make the rituals so freaking scary? They're rituals for an outer god. They're all scary. All the time. I see. If you're supposed to be helping me, why'd you put the most impenetrable ritual at the very end? What? The uprooting ritual? Eldritch rituals are serious business. Doing them out of order could cause who knows what. We're doing it out of order this time. Holy fuck, look at this carrot. It's a, it's a, these are baby carrots. So they're basically just normal carrots shaved. This is a baby carrot that wrapped around itself, apparently. That one can hold a lot of hummus. And it's not like I've been asleep at the wheel here. I've been changing the books each time I find a potentially quicker, safer path to uprooting. I see. But there's only so many options when humans outright can't produce some sounds needed for many incantations. I can make any sounds. See? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't had a problem so far. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Watching works where... Oh. Okay, you made your point. All I was trying to say is that it's a cryptographic marvel that you can consistently perform these rituals and that I'm a genius. That's all I'm really trying to say. Uh-huh. Oh, is that all? Besides, Roxy loves the rituals. She's a god, she likes rituals. And the scarier they are, the faster you fall in love. This has been a whole, this whole thing, my entire goddamn torment has been so you can watch us get it on. Okay, give me the 20. That's not how that works at all. It totally worked. Roxy likes you. Like, she likes you, likes you. Oh, she's got it bad. But, really? Oh, yeah. I'm writing fanfics of the two of you right now. This stuff is hot. The fact that this game is making an acknowledgement of Rule 34. And even enticing it is hilarious. Let's see. Pass. Mining. Slow burn. One-sided. It's not one-sided. It's not? Right. I mean, well, she's really gorgeous and... I ship it. <laughs> I ship it. Wait. No. Nice difference. Age difference. Mommy. Monster girl. Wait, is Roxy a monster girl or a furry? Oh my yeah, god! I'll add them both and let the algorithm work its magic. Added furries! Okay. Okay. Um, I have to take a photo of this and send it to a friend. I have to do this. I just find it hilarious. Roxanne Stardust. No, oh my God! Your ship name is Rockstar. No! Or Starzan? Hey, hey, hey! All of your tentacles. Hey, I hate to kill the fun, but a lot of people have really gotten hurt because you made this book, including me. It was never supposed to be like this. I thought only good things could come from summoning Roxy to your world. She just wants Earth to be one big happy family. And she's a wonderful mother. And she's kind. She's the only one who didn't laugh me out of Astrid's court when I suggested that humans and Eldritch entities belong together. In fact, she agreed with me. We made the book together, 
An all-in-one ritual book full of spells that would make the perfect date. Plus an abort button. The uprooting ritual. In case the human needed to be rescued from Roxy. <laughs> we picked the perfect human together, too. A young, handsome human man who had already spent so much time and money fruitlessly trying to contact Roxanne on his own. That was your failure. He flew through the rituals, started a huge family in her worship, and grew the thousand to such a size that the whole world was under Roxanne's influence. They never really clicked like I had hoped, but he had his god, and Roxanne had her family. They were at some point. Oops. Buck decided to steal a smooch outside of Black Ceremony, completely out of order and without consulting the ritual book first. So my, my girl was supposed to be with Buck. Instead of causing some obscure ritual to fail disastrously, something far worse happened. He accidentally performed a certain ritual perfectly by pure bad luck. The Kiss of Immortality Ritual. It was sealed with the smooch he stole. He tried everything to reverse his immortality. When nothing worked, he changed. Uh-oh. So many people, so many humans that Roxanne considered her children. All these realities later, he's still tormenting her. I don't know if it's revenge or if he's got some other plan in mind. But he's never going away. What a big fat screw up this was. If Roxy of all the gods can't find how I'm the human. human, there's no hope for any of us cosmic entities. Between you and me, Roxy is the hottest one in the family by far. Well, yeah. Go elder eldritch goat gods, hell yeah. So that's why I'm trusting you with my books. I hope it's not too weird to say, but I think after seeing you time and time again, that I should have given you the book to begin with. Yes, you should have. Well, I'm glad the book eventually found its way to me, but it's like a passed baton. Every leg of the sprint up to me was significant and worthwhile. And if I got to pass it on again, I think I'm okay with that. I think I would really like to be the one that gets to cross the finish line. The one who gets to show Roxy how far we ran together. Okay, that's it. You two are too perfect. Sorry, Roxy, <laughs> you're gonna kill me for this, but you can't expect me to sit through a thousand episodes of Stardust dying before you can admit how you feel. Yes, this has been a thousand episodes. Here you go, you crazy kid. It's the kiss of immortality ritual. Do us all a favor and end up together already. Wait. That's the same ritual Buck did. Becoming impermanent. That means I'll never die, no matter what. Even if, when reality ends again, I end up like Buck. Holding this sinister, sinister page fills me with palpable dread. This ritual is what started all of this. It was caused Buck to go mad. It's what turned the thousand against Roxanne. What every made every reality a nightmare. What caused me to suffer and perish countless times. But it's also what brought me to Roxanne. I think this is it. I think this is the key to ending all of it for good. It's how I can stop Buck in the nightmares. Oh? Fighting fire with fire? No, just punching Buck until he's dead. Not exactly. Once I cast this, my fate will be the same as Buck's. There's no take backs. But I have the heart to live with what I'm given. No take backs needed. I'm ready to accept what great highs and lows eternity has in store for me. You give me love, it comes back. I embrace eternity, eternity will embrace me. All right, now I'm really pumped. No more baton passing. I'm going, coming to? No way, Jose. Buck's scary looking. You want me to fuck him up? Um. Yeah, yeah, I know that I'm scary too. But I can't just run into the unknown like humans can. Shagots aren't brave like you are. I'm the only one that even left the sea for crying out loud. Don't worry. Don't have to come. I have your book. 
That's all I've needed so far. That's all I need now. Go get him, Stardust. Someone's here. I won't acknowledge him. I'm gonna give him bats. Hi, Edward. I would pick him up, but I don't want cat hair all over my hummus. No sign of anybody. Oh, but I've died here. It'd be the end of my life as a mortal. Couldn't it? All in all, I have to say, it's been a blast. What's ever ahead? I know that there'll be something to love. Places under the advantage, but here the fraction of pricing. Your loud buzzy, buzzing, or a sudden storm of flying insects flee now. Move quickly and deliberately away from the room you spot the bugs until you can no longer see a single fly. Flies will not follow far, but be wary. Once they cut your scent, there will likely be another feeding frenzy within minutes. You aren't fleeing from the flies, you're fleeing from what they're coming from. Check windows frequently. In the event of seeing a flock of crow-like creatures outside, immediately flee to your interior room without windows, open or closed. They are not crows. Their arrival will be silent in great numbers. Once you hear a loud flapping of wings, they have stopped circling. It's safe to come out. All sound is stolen. Panic. Loudly. Loud noises are your only salvation. Keep a running clock in your head. At least once every 15 seconds, create a loud noise. It does not matter what it is, only that it is loud. Do this for a full minute. The hush hungers for your silence. Starve it. Oh my god, there's so many monsters. If you feel a sudden sense of dread and your heart begins to race, it is your natural prey instinct. Hide in a room with only one entrance and no open windows. Once inside, face the only way in. Do not look away. Waiting is the worst part, but stray strong. It will never attack you from the front. Once dread subsides, it's likely sought prey elsewhere. Or found a better hiding spot. If your vision darkens, darkening, or you catch a glimpse of trees where they shouldn't be, the black woods are forcing night upon all living things within. This includes nocturnal predators. Find any lit candles and stare at them directly. The trees will retreat from away from the glow. Do not look away. The song of morning birds tripping means you survive. Oh my god, how many fuck- Oh my god. Listen carefully to the direction of the knocking. Slowly move towards the sound. If another sound distracts you, do not follow it. The knocking is your only guide. Pull the door open in one swift motion once the seventh knock begins. Do not hesitate. Your timing must be perfect. The sixth knock comes before you find the source. Stay perfectly still. Do not even breathe. It may pass you by. You notice the corpse rising from the fields of rotblum flowers. The second floor balcony is your only sanctuary. The only room you've never died in. Your deaths have been given a new life and they are hungry for the trade their fate for yours. They will not last long. As in this world, will solve quickly. Wait it out. Be warned. There may be stragglers. If the walls of the floor has been creaking loudly, the house itself is given life by the volumes of immortal blood spilled within the soaked foundation. Exit before you're crushed. Staircases are not safe. Do not use them. If you're upstairs, you must leave through a window. Do not use doors that move on their own. They are mouths. Holy shit, monsters! A thick mist will fill the lower levels of the house. Seek higher ground. Stand near in the open window, top floor. The megaphone hominids stalk silently with pops and elongated rims. Avoid being in a room with it for too long. Upon seeing it, you'll be compelled to scream yourself to death. No, it does not appear to be hostile, but you've you died many times of it all the same. Firstborns, if you hear a loud cry of the baby, hollow words, do not merge until the candles blow. Don't be observant. Fuck! Right, I'm gonna probably die a lot here. I 
that's normal. Dear God. So, this is it. Buck is the only remaining member of the Thousand. Are you ready for what's to come? I need to smooch you. Why you hit me just now at this kiss of mortality thing? Kind of like asking me to marry her. Promising to be with her forever. Sealed with a kiss. Go take Bex. Holding this book feels like fumbling with engagement ring in my pocket. Stardust. Are you alright? I'm I'm eating a carrot with hummus. Bear with me. Oh yeah, I'm fine. Um nervous. <laughs> you don't even know. The butterflies are in my stomach are building to the point of unbearability. And just as I'm about to swallow them down, a breeze blows into my room, carrying a foul stench that fills my lungs. I fall over retching. I sting water uncontrollably to actively fight this urge to hurl. What is that smell? Did I something die? No. Something didn't. He's here. I can sense him. You got the book? Got it. Now or never. Me and a carrot. I prop myself up on one knee. Open the book to open the, to the kiss of a mortality ritual, revealing it to her. <laughs> you don't have to kneel to me for my rich. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that? Moo! I thought I had something to say planned, but my mind is completely blank with nerves. Say something. Anything? Roxy? I... Uh, I only exist because you dream about me. Without you, there'd be no me. When I look back on my life and all the things I've got to see and do, it'd take me forever to say thank you. So I will. <sighs> Breathe. Fuck's inside the house. I've got to get going. Think about it, okay? Let me get started on it. I won't finish it if you don't say yes, okay? Okay. Finally, here we go. One versus one. I've got only one ritual to get through. Let's do this. This section of the book has been compiled from the deaths of past lives. One of the kiss rituals simply kiss Roxanne in the presence of a greater rot bloom. There's no greater rot bloom pleasant. Stand in the room with Roxanne. At least 1,000 rot bloom files. Draw the symbol. Chant. I gotta survive. So I got to survive seven minutes. Seven nights at Freddy's. I'm probably gonna fail this several times. Oh, gotta go. What does it say? Flies.
This would be interesting because I've got multiple monsters chasing me. Like there's so much shit I'm gonna have to deal with in here. The predatory growl. What does that mean? What does that mean? That's knocking. I don't know what that fucking means. What does growling mean? Oh God, it was the damn worm. Oh, time's still ticking. Can we go in here yet? Nope. I feel after we meet Roxanne, we'll do the kiss. Oh shit. What's the undead, undead, undead? What's long going? Wait it out. Be warned there may be stragglers. Okay. Predatory growling. One way in is this room. Hide in rooms, the only one entrance, and no open windows. Once the side face, the only way in. Do not look away. Never attack. Once dread subsides. Heavy footsteps retreating. Firstborn honey, what is the firstborn? What is the firstborn? Heart of the woods, heart of the woods. It's only about 9.30 for me. Are the woods. Now I'm merging the candles blow out. It's still fucking early. Oh. Fuck you, babies! I've died a few times, but my timer keeps going. Candles go out. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll miss. Oh. They're not leaving. They're destroying shit. Yeah, it's not late at all for me. Come on, go. Candles, go out. I'm gonna go out exactly at zero. I should have been down there now. Was that Roxanne? Buck, how dare you? You're messing with my woman goat? My elder god? I will destroy you. Oh dear God! Hey, lovebird. Hi, Buck. Stardust. What are you doing to her? Scaring her awake. Now that you're here, easier. I want to be so angry, but I can't be angry. Angrier than I'm frustrated and confused. Why? Why would you do this? Tormenting isn't gonna get, change a thing. I can't face the reality that you're immortal already. The reality is that I'm immortal. I couldn't care less. I changed my headset, so I have to have this on. It's Edward. Edward. He smells like outside because all my windows are open. Mwah. It actually was a very nice day today. That I could actually have all the windows open. Hi, Edward. Look how disgruntled he is. Look how sad he is. Mwah. 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 Edward. He came for you, goat. Came because you keep coming back. He wants to say hello. Hello. Do, 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 do. He's just like, what? Wah. Good word. I love you. You want some ice cream? I've trimmed his claws so I can. La 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 la. Edward is the only cat I've met. I can go. That his own tail is a legit play toy for him. That humans can use. All right, Edward, you can get hugs. Oh, down you go. Ed, what really? Always has to have more attention. If the eternal sleeper wakes up, the end. Immortality or not. You have a hole in your head. If I can remember something about that amused library. Once a god that dreams all the other gods into existence. By extension, all their realities. Wait, that means you're talking about ending 
Everything. Everything? Everything. How is torturing Roxanne supposed to do that? Why are you punishing her? To make her scream loud enough that the sleeper hears it. If she doesn't, maybe another god will. Any god that learns that I exist will start having nightmares too. Yeah, plans in you. Yeah, he farted. Once I'm in their head, it's sheet clutching nightmares forever. I'll never stop. I only need one screamer. I'll find them eventually. I'm human. The ultimate persistence predator. And you would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for this meddling cat. <laughs> oh. Hello, handsome. <laughs> She's back. Auntie Nan Nan. Auntie Nan Nan? Threatening to terrorize my very sisters and granddaughters the way you so tortured my niece? <laughs> I respect that. My silly flock of hands could use a good browbeating. But trying to speak to the eternal sleeper? Come now, that is the duty of a god, <laughs> not a the metal playing pretend. I will articulate to you the difference. What a lucky break. I can complete the kiss. Wait a minute. Auntie Nanan drags back into a dream. She's going to start having nightmares too. Buck's going to end up in the mind of the god who talks directly to the eternal sleeper. That's exactly what he wants. God, he's free. It's now or never. I never had a bad dream in my life. I've had dreams so wonderful. I woke up. It woke me up at the right at the best part. If I become immortal, I'll survive through waking up this time. Roxanne, I don't have time to say it now. But I will have to forever to say it. She smooched me. That carrot has no other half. You've already said it. Time after time. I love you too. Human on furry! Yes, so... You are okay with this? Mm. That is second kiss of immortality. <laughs> no, just a regular one. Stardust. Since I met you, the world is I ending. How I could be so lucky. How you could have appeared so suddenly, like a bright star in the darkest sky. Because I'm Buck. I think it's because, despite everything, I never stopped believing in good. That someone like you had to exist somewhere. Yes. And you did. You are the Why are you going white? You had to exist somewhere in this infinite cosmos. Stardust. You're the most wonderful thing I could have ever <clears throat> dreamed up. <laughs> Wakeys. Thank you, my Thank you, Oh, my twinkling Stardust. I forgot his voice acted. Grandgram, you're crying. Hey! Did you have another bad dream? I guess she's a character I've seen in the first game from the images for the first game. No, child. Do you want to hear about it? What? But you never want to talk about your dreams. I had my reasons. I didn't want to fill your head with fear of humans. Is this a prequel now, then? I can tell you about love. Love? For humans? Hard to believe, I know. But I believe in time. You just might come to love them too. Ew! <laughs> oh, keep it down, ladies. Sleep well? Does <laughs> 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 so this true end? What's going on? That's Buck. That's me. Out of every Stardust I met, you've been the biggest pain in my ass. Sorry. Where are we? 
Space between dreams. Get comfortable. Are you gonna try to kill me? You wish. We just get to sit here and stare at each other until the next dream starts. I'll get the bookmaker. Or I'll get caught by Nyanlithotep. Or I'll go back to my original plan. Auntie Nanyan? You can't do any of that now. I'm here. And I'm not going away ever again. Do you even know what you're in for? Infinite, cruel, eternity. I think I'm tr in a truly infinite cosmos. You find exactly what you're looking for. Eventually. You look for cruelty in the cosmos of infinite volume and found it in no short supply. But you know what, Buck? When the dream starts again, I'm going to run barefoot through the grass. I'm going to watch scary movies. I'm going to love, to, going to love, be joyous, move, learn, cry, and feel so much of that all the bad was worth it. That's what I did when I was mortal. That's what I'll do now. That'll end. The clock is ticking on how long you'll still be able to experience any of those things. The clock is was always ticking, Buck. When it runs out, ashes to ashes, stardust to stardust. But there's a thing out there worth seeing before that happens. Things that make it all worthwhile. I swear it. You know what? Come on. Where are you taking me? This void is infinite, right? I bet there's an infinite number of things that will make life worthwhile. Too. Even out here. Stop me when you see it. So we we are in turn saving Buck. <laughs> Dedicated to my brilliant life, Carolyn Hunter. You make me a real sucker for love. better than I expected. I mean, holy shit. This was definitely have it has its nerve wrackingness, has its comedy, has its seriousness. It they did a good job with this. All of it. They I honestly I'm tempted to go back to play the first one. Though I hear the first one's more of a traditional Dating sim. May I may go back to it. Maybe. Not sure. But no, I seriously like this. They did a good job with it. Its gameplay is simple, but it's pretty nice thing is there's enough of a challenge. That last section is I feel the last chapter was a little rushed. Because it just throws you in and you gotta survive seven minutes, but there's no penalty on death. But at the same time, I'm like that there's no penalty on death. Because so many games will have it. You gotta survive seven minutes and you die. And then boom, right at the, you die at the last second, you have to start all over. And if it's randomized, it's pure luck. So I'm kind of glad it didn't do that. So my, I can, oh, I can stop it. <clears throat> I want to let the song, no, oh, three, two, Find something, Buck? I'm speechless. And I'm not any 
closer to seeing it all. <laughs> oh, looks like a new dream is finally starting. Ready to go duke it out again? Maybe later. I think I prefer to stay out here. It's peaceful. Hey, we showed him the world. It'll take me a while to see everything. Bye! Enjoy the black hole, by the way. You're falling into a black hole, Buck! Thank you. Roxanne? I can't wait to see what you've dreamt up now. Come outside, Stardust. Daytime. I did not expect this objective to be here. I expected it literally to be the end. So colorful. I went the wrong way. Ah! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Nanny. How yeah, it's all of them. Her? Of course she'd be jumpy. I said I was sorry. I can't think of anything better. Oh, they're all alive and they remember. Why did you have to jump out at all? Drugs. Nanny, Billy, kid? You're all here? None of them have a stare. Of course, silly. Where else would we be? It's not like we can just leave the woods. I like how she's like, mm. But now that they've pretty much covered the whole planet, we can go everywhere. I can finally go shopping in Paris. Yay, wait. And I'll be able to go on a world tour. My fans will love it. And oh, Billy, you <laughs> really must come with me on tour. I'll need a bodyguard, and you're perfect for the role. I'd rather eat my shoe. Uh, I got a shoe for you. Billy, stop being cranky. Sorry. I didn't get enough violence out of my system before peace broke out. See, a bodyguard, you can punch a bunch of people. Oh, yeah. You should see outside, Stardust. Everything's different. It's a whole new world waiting to be re-explored. No reason to ever come back to this old place. Ugh. Can we please get out of here already? <laughs> Hey! Those peeling floorboards are rotting, and I'm pretty sure I just saw a rat the size of a chihuahua run by. It's not enough of this gross old house to last a lifetime. This is my gross old house. This is her childhood home. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, nice. Wait, wait, wait. You knew that she lived here? I spent. Forever trying to figure that out. <laughs> Why don't you help me or, or leave me a note or something? I was your boss. What's your one rep max on bench press? <laughs> Guys, it's all the same. I may take a moment to say goodbye to this place. I'll be outside in a second. <sighs> no worries. The rest of your family already got their chance to pack up and say their goodbyes. Only fair you get your turn. My family is here too? Oh yeah, they're totes outside. Your folks are like really hitting it off with Roxanne. Color me shocked. Who could have possibly expected that a goddess of fertility and a married couple with 10 kids would get along? <laughs> but like I said, no rush. Especially if you don't want to get caught in the crossfire of their grandkids discussion. Like legit, how will that work? Take all the time you need. We'll wait for you. Sure your steps down today, like, leaving me likely to be the last goodbyes to this house. Wait. Butterfly found the web. I don't feel... Be for a morbid looking power. Must be a rot bloom. What's that jingling? What's that jingling? Game wants me to go outside. 
upstairs. Quieter. So it's not up here. It's the rot bloom. It's the heart of the forest. Or it's this room. Oh, no, there's no bodies in this room. I was expecting to find out what happened in this room. Uh... Everyone's waiting for you. What do you think you're doing, Stardust? Well, now. Aren't you just full of surprises? When you first stumbled into these woods, cheeks I did not expect this. Of rage. Your only desire was to see these twisted trees burn. Oh, uh, music, what the fuck? For a moment, I thought you'd forgotten your quest so easily in exchange for a flutter of lashes and a flash of thigh. It seems I may have misjudged your resolve. A mistake I do not often make. Those seeking to destroy the Black Woods inevitably become compelled to worship. Oh my god. That boastful promise is printed in every version of this contemptible book. Will you prove them liars and burn them down in a fit of mortal defiance? Or will you prove them right and spend your immortal days simpering at my niece's cloven hooves like a love-struck fool in the very Eden you swore to raise to ashes? Oh, uh, hold on. Okay, we can do from a final dream. The agony of indecision suits you, little matchstick. <laughs> Though I do hope you choose to burn it all down. I've never cared for a happy ending. I am... Oh, we're gonna do this and then we'll load from the final dream. I need that. I need to get the seed thing. So, no, we're going to do the ending. Because we can come back to this. Let's get the good ending. Or whatever this ending is. I don't know if it's true or good. Yay, it's everyone. Ah, cultists. True end. This is true end. Okay. That is not a normal cat. That is our parents. I guess this is our the rest of our family. Billy cracking the upside of uh, Kitty's head, kid's head. So the cultists are still around. What the fuck, Taco? So like, oh, it's so cute. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna load. I wanna see what the other ending is. Edward's back. First. Gotta get all the items. So we need to go in here.
Wait, there's no C. Plus, I already have the seed in me. Wrong way. Yeah, there's no jingle yet. Skip, 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 skip. So we're going to go upstairs and check that room. Oh, yeah, there's nothing in here. Go look at our bedroom. Wait, there's that bedroom you can never open. First, let's check ours. Buddy, face guitar. Can we open that room? Do you want to make the same mistake? Eh. Alright, we're going. Oh, we burn everyone. Oh. So this is bad end, I bet. Everyone is stuck floating in eternity. Truth ends. 